Hey everybody, this is Perch. Thanks for putting up with this shit um, on a regular basis. It's funny, when you when you tune into this show, you never know quite what you're going to get. So um, I, I've been thinking lately I should try and kind of organize my thoughts, go home, get a good microphone, and then record things with good audio quality so you don't have to listen to me driving around the car. But I think you'd lose out on a lot of spontaneity. Spontaneity is a little bit of what makes this show tick. It, it's what is what it is. And um, I I don't think I'm I'm never going to have one of those massive audiences, which is okay. That's not what I'm shooting for. It's never the intent. Um, But I feel like there's a a decent portion of you who are in it for kind of what you're getting. This this crappy audio, sometimes stream of consciousness kind of thing. Um, This is one of those videos where I I know I'm I'm leaving lots of good openings for like a Mumbles or somebody like that to come in and, and crap on the show. But I wish they wouldn't for this one. Because I think this is, you know, you ever have these things where you have a thought in mind and you're like, this is a, a profound thought. This is actually something, but you know you're not going to communicate it perfectly. So, but you you wish you could. So that's one of this, that's, that this video is kind of one of those thoughts. So I haven't recorded in a while. It's actually been about a week and a half since I've recorded any videos for this channel. Um, you wouldn't know that because I'm, I record a lot of stuff in advance and I, I tape it and I put it up and off the ghost, but it's been about a week and a half since I've recorded a single thing. And it's one of those times where whenever I go into these modes, I'm not sure whether I'll come back. If I'll just run out the content I have and it'll be over, you know, just, just the end. But what happens is I start to think and I start to get these thoughts that kind of won't go away in my mind. And I'm, as I'm off kind of doing various things. I'm looking at financial analysis. I'm doing contract review. I'm kind of organizing teams. I'm dealing with HR issues. I'm doing kind of other things in my other life where comic books is the tether. In many cases, I feel like my life was intended to be in comics and yet I had to go do these other things. But so I try and maintain this tether back to comics. It's the the true heart of comics. And every now and then I had a, a writer tell me uh, fairly recently that, um, you know, I'm not true comics because if I have true comics and I would have just gone for it and gone and, and been all in on comics. But I think to myself, that would have been a pretty crappy life in a lot of cases. And, and by what I've done, it's allowed me more time to keep my heart pure for comics. That may make no sense, but anyway, uh, but this is the thought, this is a thought that I, I really hope people don't crap on. But, you know, when you say that, if you say it, you know, online, if you say it on, on a social media or, or on YouTube, then you're guaranteeing people will crap on it. But here's the profound thought. Right now, I think a lot of people are stumbling around trying to figure out how to make comics tick. Because the reality is, even if people are trying to prove certain points in comics, everybody likes to get paid. Everybody likes money. Everybody likes fame. Everybody likes job security. Everybody likes those things. So if, you know, if they really were given the, the outright choice of make your whatever weird point you have in your head or get paid, you know, they're going to pick get paid because, you know, if you're, if you're paid, then you can, you know, get a lot of good stuff done. But without money in comics, without a lot of that job security, people wind up making points because what else are you going to do? You don't have any kind of financial incentive, so you might as well kind of fuck around and make, make the points you make and gain some popularity, and hope that money comes later. There's spoiler alert for a lot of people who are in comics. The money does not come later. If you right now are are making an active choice to defer your money and your revenue from, you know, from in in favor of popularity or Twitter likes or whatever it happens to be, here's the thing that most grown-ups, most your parents won't tell you, your dad won't tell you. You're never getting that money. It's, it's not coming. Once you make the choice to pick popularity over cash, the cash doesn't ever come. That's, that's this ug- ugly truth to life. And quite frankly, the people who are going for cash need you to believe that. They need you to believe that popularity equals better than cash because if you're out of the running for cash, then you're, you, they have an easier shot to get to the cash. That is, that is the game that gets played. And I say this from the standpoint of having been at enough dinners with rich people. And I, I have a very close friend who is a billionaire with a B. Now, before anybody gets too crazy about that, he doesn't, you know, that one of the keys to being a billionaire is you don't give other people your money. So he certainly doesn't give me any money. But it's interesting. He gives me wisdom. It's interesting to listen to him talk because it, it is one of those cases where you learn how manipulative people can be. And in comics, I see this play out all the time. Wouldn't you rather have 
you know, social media clout or Twitter likes or fame. And people will trade cash in hand for those things. And I, I'm, I'm telling you as, as, again, picture this as dad perch. I hate that term, but as dad, never take that bet. It's a sucker bet. That's somebody who, who is trying to get more than you and realizes that by getting you out of the way, it makes their job easier. That's the truth nobody ever wants to tell you. At any rate, um, I, I, I have these, these ideas that come up from time to time, from conversations, from other things that go on inside of comics, where comics, there, there's been this big scam that's existed between the publishers, between a lot of creators, between a lot of people. It basically goes like this. Um, comics isn't real. It's a fantasy. It's a, it's a pastime. It's a, you know, it's a hobby. And the reality is, as soon as you fall into that line of thinking, the, th the line of thinking that where it's not a business, it's not where you need to get paid, it's not where you need to actually take your career seriously, as soon as you fall into that line of thinking, you are doing someone else a favor. You may think to yourself, hey, I'm, I'm you know, easing up on the pressure that I have. You may think to yourself that you're keeping it more pure. One of the big scams that happens with artists all the time is artists are told, Hey, you know, don't worry about this. Don't, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're an artist. Uh, you can just, um, you know, you, 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 if you, if you think too much about the commercial aspects of it, then you're, you're no longer staying pure to your craft. That's bullshit. It's, it's fundamental bullshit. Somebody is feeding you a line and hopefully getting you comfortable with it so they can take the money that you're deserved. That's, that's all there is to it. So at times I look on with bemusement at various things that go on on social media where I see artists and writers and other people who are with all sincerity talk about kind of the love of the craft and everything else. But here's a crazy thing. You can get paid and be in love with the craft simultaneously. Both things can be true. And if, if the second you give up on one, you're actually doing someone else a favor. And this sounds crass, but the second you're doing someone else a favor, you're giving away value. You're giving away your dollars and your money for someone else. I don't know. I see a lot of stupid things. I, I and, and people fight dumb fights. Uh, you know, a friend of mine sent me the tweet, was well, this is Mark Brooks, who posts a lot of stupid shit, and it's fine. But here's the crazy part. Mark Brooks is a very talented individual. Now, you may tell yourself, no, it's not. You may convince yourself 800 different ways that he's not, but he is. He's a very talented artist. No doubt about it. The skill that exists there is, is absolutely true. But Mark Brooks is selling off his value in favor of Twitter and likes and clout and other stupid stuff that maybe is entertaining him. I mean, who knows? You know, your quality of life, whatever you're, whatever you're after, good for you. But if Brooks today kind of exerted even a, you know, 50%, 20% of the energy he spends on Twitter, promoting his craft across, I don't know, tech, biotech, marketing, advertising agencies, other places... That guy would be making seven figures a year easy, clearing it, having a great life. Now, it's not all about money, but the crazy thing is another thing like, you know, most dads won't tell you, you know, that whole thing, money can't buy happiness. You're right. Money itself cannot buy happiness. But here's the crazy part. If you've got money, you have a much greater chance of finding happiness on your own because money and being wealthy and having that kind of equity it, it does things for you. It gives you the patience. It gives you the confidence. It gives you the ease to go out and actually make big bets and do great things for your career and your life. If you're struggling to make ends meet, even if you're, you're kind of middle class, you're making checks, but you're not really, you don't have fuck you money. And fuck you money is a kind of money where you go out and if you see something you like, you buy it and you don't worry about how you have to pay for it because you know you can it's kind of fuck you money. If you have that kind of money, that's, that's pretty powerful. A lot of people in comics do not have that money, but they've convinced themselves they're still doing well. Mark Brooks posted this thing. Uh, I don't know. Somebody is like Stan Lee is rolling over in his grave over She-Hulk Disney Plus Episode 3. So 
look, I, I mean, as somebody who is, is uh, me quite agnostic in life, Stan Lee is not rolling over in his grave because of She-Hulk Episode 3. Even if there was an amazing afterlife, the idea that Stan Lee is going to be giving a shit about the post credit scene of She-Hulk, sorry, a computer-generated She-Hulk, twerking her ass to, uh, who the, who the fuck is she? But it, it's the, uh, it's, it's that, the, what, the, the singer who sings the song about cherry, like, I'll give you the bite of the sweetest pie, and she means pussy, but, you know, she's still trying to vaguely kind of sing a song that can get on the radio without saying, you know, you want to eat my pussy, because you don't want to say that, that, that's, who is this, who is this, uh, I can't, you know what, I can't, I can't remember the, the rap artist who is in, uh, she called she Hulk episode three that everybody is so excited about that got Stan that got she Hulk to twerk that nobody gives a fuck about that everybody will have forgotten about in a year because nobody's going to remember this post credit scene and even Disney themselves put this in a post credit screen eh, post credit screen which tells you exactly how much they give a shit about this entire thing anyway um, a bunch of people is like Stanley's rolling over in his grave about this I let me let me kind of assure you as somebody who has met Stan Lee. One, he's not rolling in his he's not rolling over in any grave. He's dead. But two, like if Stan Lee's getting paid on some level, he he you could have who gives a shit? He does not give a shit. Anyways, a bunch of people are went all up in arms about She Hulk twerking in episode three of that of the Disney Plus show in a post credit scene is causing Stan Lee to be embarrassed. And Mark Book Brooks comes running in and says, I knew Stan Lee not super well, but enough to be around him a decent amount, and enough that he remembered my name each time I saw him. Hey, uh, you know, spoilers, if we're going to throw our dicks on the table, Stan Lee also remembered my name every time I met him, just for what it's worth, and that name was not Purge. Also enough that he wouldn't be turning over in his grave. You are correct about that. If anything, he'd be twerking with him. No, he would not, you dumbass. No, Stan Lee would be basically saying, um, did I get paid for this? Yes or no? Did I have the possibility of getting paid for this? Yes or no? If you answered, no, I didn't get paid for this, and no, there was no option for me to get paid for this, Stan Lee wouldn't give a rat's ass about she hulk standing stoically or twerking i get i i assure you as somebody who knows the guy but regardless this these are the kinds of arguments that go on in, in comics that are that are just just dumb as hell and it's it's these are the arguments that always make me feel like it's a grant morrison level conspiracy where a number of people may a small number of people are distracting us with really stupid shit to keep our eyes off the ball of the fact that this industry, this business, actually can make money, is making money. A handful of people are making that money, but the majority of people are not seeing any of that money. And they're not seeing that money because people are fixated on the fact of if, hypothetically, Stan Lee, who is a corpse, is rolling over in his grave based on She-Hulk shaking a CGI ass in a post credit scene of a Disney Plus streaming show, and if you aren't rolling your eyes, then you're not paying attention. I don't know. There's nothing wrong with wanting to get paid. There's nothing wrong with trying to, uh, you know, to try to, to just, just trying to make a good living in comics. That's what we should all be after. And there's lots of there's lots of excuses we can all give at different times of, oh, we wouldn't want to offend this person, or we got to stay in good with this click, or we can't uh, look too ambitious because, and it's all horseshit. If you're in comics right now, you don't need to be a dick about it, but look out for number one, and number one is you. Number one is you trying to get paid. Get paid, create the best work you can, try and be happy about it. And don't put up with a bunch of nonsense. That's my little point. I know I didn't make the point clearly, and I know it's it's completely easy target for uh, for you know a mumbles to come in and, and do a patented good mumbles uh, you know riff on what I do, and I do love mumbles to death. I mean, God, I mean, it's, it, mumbles is my wife, so why wouldn't I love mumbles? Of course, uh, but. In all seriousness, there's there's some, if you can dig through all the random bullshit as I'm driving down a shitty Texas road, 
um, there, there's something in there. Please, please try and find it. And I'll get to more serious stuff later. Thanks for listening.